with the wealth that he's accumulated, he puts himself in a position to be able to be a serious contender to buy Arsenal or any football club that he chooses to. But then becomes the bigger question, which is the concentration of wealth that it required. If you look at the Forbes valuation, if you want to take any notice of those valuations and say Arsenal are valued at $2.9 billion. So we call that £2 billion. This guy's value is tied up in a brilliant business, Spotify, product of its time. And when we talk about the fact he didn't take no for an answer, yeah, technology allowed people, a lot of people, to do a lot of things if they're technologically minded to see an opportunity to be able to do it. Who mm. would have ever thought? Mm. Who would have ever thought that music would have gone the way it's gone? And the fact that the, the record industry would have been hammered the way it was hammered by Apple and, and the streaming products that are out there for music, that, you know, that the whole value of music industry has changed completely. But that is a massive, massive, massive leap from being a technological guy that can sit and work things out to going into a public domain business that subsequently has people like Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp and Patrick Rivera indexed to him. Well, what use is that? If, you know, what use are they to him? So in what do they bring to the party? Nothing. Apart well, the names, the well, names yeah, bring something. The, but OK, but that doesn't bring any running of Arsenal to the party. It doesn't bring the desire for him to go, I know, Patrick Vieira gave me this little tip, so I'm going to go and drop two and a half billion on that basis. Right? What you do is you use that, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if, if that is a public domain position that's probably been whipped up by certain segments of the media because it's now Stan Kroenke absolutely must go. Stan Kroenke hasn't put a for sale sign up. So it's very difficult to buy something from somebody, irrespective of the very loud noise that's coming from segments of the of the of the media and the fan base of Arsenal. No, but Simon, is it not the case that every Premier League club at the moment, every club is up for sale? Every club's yeah, available. of course it is. But yeah. Stan Kroenke's told you he ain't selling his. But he's, well, he's saying that. Yeah, and and do you know what he's, do you know what happens to somebody when they want don't want to sell their house? Someone knocks on their door. They ask for twice the price. Mm. Do you want to sell your house? No, but I want to buy it. Okay, it was three billion. It's now four. Because that's how you do deals when you're in that situation. Now, what, the, what, what you'll have me believe, and segments of the media will have me believe, and Arsenal fans will have me believe, if they shout loud enough, right, Stan Kroenke is going to drop his value and give it to the next owner that comes in that, by the way, doesn't like to be told what to do, has his own view on things, so he'll fall foul of the Arsenal fans within five minutes, right, will have a vantage point on saying, OK, in the door I come, and I'm going to run it the way precisely the way the Arsenal fans want me to. No, that's not going to happen. I'm going to sit there and listen and learn and work out that football is a very, very difficult business with economics that don't stack up, and I'm going to find myself in the same frustrated position that nine split of owners find themselves in, which is, how the hell have I got myself in this situation? If he wants to buy Arsenal, that would be a wonderful investment for him. Borrow against his really viable shares to buy a business that's in very difficult situation with a disgruntled group of fans that don't like the way the club's run and would expect him to walk through the door and do the exact opposite which Stan Kroenke does. And by that, what they mean is spend and spend and spend and spend and spend. And if he's got any brains about him, he'll look at this very carefully. What that guy turned around and said was what I said to you off air. It'll be a joint venture with somebody else, as it was when uh, Kroenke you know, bought the 10% of ITV shares holdings and built up with those up and built up his ownership and built up his ownership until eventually he got himself in a position where he could acquire the lot. Mm. It's an interesting one because we're now linking football clubs that are in the public domain as being part and parcel of the big six awful, vile, horrible owners that should be removed to be replaced by the next set of awful, vile, horrible owners.